When you have these crossover uh, events, I guess um, what we see now is if you look at particular clonal complexes of stuff ores, you quite often see uh, closely related strains of the same sequence type actually have multiple host associations. Okay, so we take one particular MLST defined sequence type, for example, ST5 uh, in this case and see it's associated with humans, and it's also associated with uh, chickens, actually. So this may be due to, there's a couple of hypotheses for this, it may be due to zoonotic transfer, so maybe one strain is very, very good at, at causing infections in multiple hosts. Um, but typically that might be a single episode of infection in the new host. Or you can have a host jump event followed by adaptation to the new host species um, and then onward transmission to other members of, the, of that new host species. So a host jump event followed by adaptation uh, and then largely host restriction in that, in that new host species. And we've identified different examples of this. What I want to sh tell you about is the poultry strains belonging to this um, ST5 lineage. There is another... Uh, lin yes? Um, yes, is the answer. We have found Staph aureus um, in the great apes and monkeys. We found it pretty much everywhere we've looked. Now, whether it's truly colonizing those, of course, it's, it's, it's difficult to find wild animals which have had no kind of exposure to humans. So of course, you could argue that maybe you're getting transmission from humans and then you're sampling in, in the great apes. But we have found what we think are fairly unique strains uh, in monkeys and macaques that are unlikely to have been recently acquired, um, very recently acquired from, from humans. So there probably are some Staph aureus-like uh, bacteria or maybe subspecies of, of Staph aureus which are colonizing uh, monkeys. Yes. So it's, it's quite a big area of interest of ours. Um, but obviously it's easier to get strains from, from livestock while we are now starting to try and sample in, in wild animals as well. But Staph aureus is, a, is a, a major pathogen of poultry. It causes these kinds of joint infections and these kinds of infections in the feet of these poultry as well, colloquially known as, as bumblefoot and it all uh, collectively contributes to, to lameness in these, in these broiler poultry. So if we look at the relatedness of these strains, we find that the vast majority of these poultry strains belong to a single clonal lineage known as ST, ST5, um, which also happens to be one of the major global human lineages. Okay, so they, they share uh, a fairly recent uh, ancestry together. So this is a basic phylogenetic tree of all of the um, poultry strains that we, we sampled and, and worked out their sequence type uh, and some other strains of representing the main human lineages uh, as well. And you can see there's two major ones associated with, with poultry. CC5 represents the majority over uh, about 60% of the poultry strains belong to uh, CC5, and they're pretty widespread as well globally. The ST5 ones you can see indicated in here in, in purple. However, in Australia, we don't find any of these uh, ST5 strains, and this may be related to the fact that until the 1990s, there was a very strong blockade on livestock on import uh, into Australia, which may be why they have seem to have their own set of poultry Staph aureus strains. But when we do an extended phylogenetic analysis, so we look at a, a greater amount of, of sequence across the genome of, of Staph aureus, not quite whole genome sequence level, but um, it's kind of like an extended MLST, we, had, we capture more of the variation that exists. 
and we get a minimum we can uh, draw a minimum spanning tree such as this one here and these different nodes are separated by uh, SNPs or nucleotide uh, polymorphisms which are identified uh, between the strains but essentially what I want you to get from this tree is that all of the poultry ST5 isolates are more closely related to each other than they are to the human ST5 uh, isolates, okay? Um, which implies that they have uh, shared a, a, a recent, more recent common ancestor. However, they're most closely related to uh, a, s a human ST5 sublineage, which was circulating in, in Poland back in the, in Polish hospitals back in uh, the 19, the 1980s. So based on this tree and based about on an understanding of other mutations which occurred uh, in genes leading to loss of gene function, we infer that the most likely scenario was that there was a human to poultry host jump, a single host jump event which happened and then that strain adapted to, the po to, uh, to colonize poultry and then to spread in uh, amongst uh, other poultry populations. And when we look at the, the, the genome sequence for one of these poultry strains, we find that it has a, a unique set of coding sequences which are potentially mobile. So it looks like it's acquired these mobile genetic elements since the host jump event happened. And these mobile genetic elements are probably very important for the adaptation of this particular strain to poultry. And when we look at other strains, poultry strains of Staph aureus, including other ST5s, but also the other major uh, clonal complex, CC385, we find that uh, it, they share a lot of these mobile genetic elements. So it looks like there's convergent evolution or parallel evolution in acquiring these mobile uh, genetic elements, which presumably then contributes to their ability to colonize poultry and spread in poultry populations. And this is just to show that what we see at the sequence level is also reflected at the kind of phenotypic functional level because we find that the poultry st uh, strains are more resistant to killing by uh, avian heterophils, which is the uh, chicken equivalent of, of, of neutrophils, than the human strain MR1, which is the closest relative, uh, which is, uh, as I said, was circulating in, in uh, Polish hospitals. So it's, it seems to have adapted the ability uh, to survive better in the presence of, of avian heterophils. <coughs>